guys, it's Josh Green with Artist Sand Academy. And today I have one of my longtime friends, Kenny Jordan. He's from Pensacola, Florida. We studied together at the University of West Florida and we were mentored under Greg Saunders, a renowned New Orleans artist. And Kenny is 33. He's working in Pensacola, Florida. And how do you introduce yourself, Kenny? Um. I think you pretty much said it. Um, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I'm currently at, just working and, and doing art right now. So, and that's that's a really good introduction. So, when did it shift to like I want to be an artist? Like, when did you decide like this is going to be my lifestyle? Um, 2015, I had an Achilles injury, and. I just had to face the facts. Like sports may not ever be the same for me. I had already started moving in the art direction anyway. And it was like, um, I gotta get serious about something and I gotta move and art was the outlet. So I was like, from here on out, I'm, that's, what, that's what I'm gonna do. Cause you're doing well in basketball, right? Yeah. So I went down to Valencia and Orlando. Um, I was going to do the PJC things. Um, it was cool when we were playing ball in the city, like Roy Jones, and the boxer in Pensacola. He got us all together, wanted us to go places and whatnot. And I, I couldn't turn down my college at UWF or what I was doing there. So I was like, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to stay back. I'm going to pursue this. And it was cool because all of them was like, well, you, you better do it better than this. <laughs> Yeah, because you, you tore your Achilles tendon. Yeah. Right? And yeah. that that kind of end of that. Yeah. yeah. So at the University of West Florida, that was where you first started getting into, uh, like, fine art or visual yeah. art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I remember your first couple of classes. What was that like for you? Was that a big moment doing like a, a oil painting class? I think well, you were with Marcia or drawing with Greg. Well, it was the first time, like, well, right before then, I was going back and forth from what's now Pensacola State College. And back then it was Pensacola Junior College. When I was going back and forth, um, those prereq courses, those drawing courses, that was a bit of a shock to me. But um, when I did get in your class with like Marcia and Greg, it was like, I guess you were around people that came from like art families. And I didn't know what to think about that. And that was, it was slightly intimidating, but at the same time, it was like, I kind of don't know what that means either. So I was okay. I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you were like, you know, from the moment you started this class, you were so natural at drawing. Like your line always had energy in it and everyone was always interested in you, whatever you were doing. Then I think that, I think that is what gave you the confidence to like, all right, I'm going to do art. I don't know. Um, it, it showed me that I wasn't lost in my head. It showed me like, oh, like, so this is like pleasing not only to myself, well, but it was cool that um, what really like kind of took me that made me like go further with it. It was like y'all were seeing stuff that I wasn't seeing, and I was very curious. I wanted to know what were y'all looking at that I just did, and from there it became like a learning place for me. Like all my peers, um, just the the resources there, and just being in those classes, I, I was like a sponge. And it was, it was so many options that I really had to start making, like, choices for myself to go this way or that way. And that started to kind of, like, grow me up. And I think there's, like, a, a misconception. Because everyone thinks that, like, art in the big city or art at the university or whatever is hard. But what's really hard is doing art in a small town with very limited places to show, with a very limited community. You really gotta be self-driven. You gotta be really self-driven, yeah. 
<laughs> like, so, you know, I mean, you've been doing this for years. What advice could you give to people who are in that situation, who are in a very limited art community with not a lot of options? When you're doing your work, you're going to come to a space that you feel like you should like be. You're going to be able to see your, yourself in the future in that space, and you can look back and see where you came from, and, and you enjoy it. And you're usually alone when you, you get to that, that place. Find everything you can to feel that, because there's not enough claps to make you keep going. And there's not a, it, it, like you gotta you, you gotta go yourself, you know, and you gotta gotta stand on that. You have no idea what that next step is, but just say you're gonna keep doing this, and you're gonna get somewhere. I think that's the thing I like about art in Pensacola is the people who are doing art there. It's completely just about their experience with it they're really going to a place they're traveling yeah and um i've heard you talk a bit about kind of a a transcendent idea where you never stop being an artist you consider yourself doing art every moment of the day during your job doing all the mundane things you've been able to transform that in your mind yeah. into an artwork so can you say a little bit about that? Um, just being able to, to flip the script, like I'm saying, being able to go back to that place. Um, I can be truthful right now. I'm, I'm looking at you in the screen and you're talking to me and I'm just looking at different colors and shit right now. It's, it's, it's being able to take every moment of the day and, and push it to that space. And then when it's time to use it, it's there to call upon. Like you can just, you can use it. So. <clears throat> um, taking beneficial factors of every situation, um, bad situations, good situations, mundane, being stuck at work, um, using certain tools at work, um, having to go deal with a certain situation at home, um, vacation, regardless, being able to like just make a mold for yourself. So I stick mine into colors. I stick mine into like patterns, numbers and stuff like that. So I don't have to like, like wreck my brain. And what's, what's that mean? What do you mean? Like, I heard you say that that you give colors to people, or you you put situations into a pattern. Yeah. So um, I like to break everything down into like seasons to grasp it, and then start breaking those seasons down into like um little sections to really know what I'm dealing with. So it starts to get to like degrees of separation, really. Um, for, for like blue, like you're, you're taught blue is communication. You're taught red, like when you see red and how people advertise with all these colors and stuff like that. But um, you, you see red and I don't mean with like your, your physical eyes, like you see red in a sense, in a circumstance type of way you know when something's good for you to jump into you know when something's not and when you start attributing those those kind of awarenesses to to colors um grabbing a limited palette so like picking up on the things you go through each and every day um i go through a bad time during this i go to a, a good time during this start picking up on it when it's in the summertime or in the wintertime. And, you know, like learning your like your internal weather, your seasons. And when you go outside, there's colors everywhere. So inside there's colors everywhere. It's just being able to correlate them. And for me, that's what art is. Just doing that and making sense. And somehow it looks like whatever I'm doing. So the thing I think is interesting about you and the reason why I invited you to do this interview is because kind of from the ground up, you have your own way of thinking and seeing the world that in my opinion is completely original. And sometimes it makes it hard to communicate with you because uh, yeah. you come from such a different place. 
But that's also what is cool about Kenny is um, you you show new types of ways of thinking about something or a way of thinking about color. So for you, a color is a whole psychological state or a, a set of circumstances. It's yeah. a, a whole spectrum. It's a, it's a whole spectrum. It's a whole realm. It's... Um, I, I look at things uh, when it comes to like a course and, and that's how I kind of came up with that and we'll get into that a little bit later but um, I have to understand it to use it properly I don't care if I get it right I don't care if I get it wrong but I gotta approach it like how does this make sense to me and a lot of times there's not a lot of things to, to hold on to in this world without just like blindly like believing and having faith in something. So my whole point was to, to develop my own starting point. I got to start from somewhere. And if I can start from somewhere, I'll begin to have my own perspective and whatever I go through. So it's been a long time coming, but I had to rearrange a lot of stuff and a lot of things have transformed in my life. So getting comfortable with change has been huge. And, and now I'm not scared of it, especially in a psychological standpoint. It, it's... So yeah, for you, art is a way to, um, to manage life, to comprehend what's happening, complex situations in, in the, the 2D space and the actual life are, are seamless for you. Yeah, uh, I use them both hand in hand. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it's this side, sometimes it's that side. I'll use art to understand this part in life. I'll use life to understand something in art. So yeah, exactly. Okay, I think we set the stage. So you made a presentation. Why don't you go ahead yeah. and share uh, what you made? Cool, so... Uh, there we go. So I finally decided to just adapt this Kanito. Like I, I, I like the way it felt. Um, it started with a passion. So right off the bat, I used red. Um, why I started using crayons the way I do, um, just to keep it really simple. Um, in elementary school, I just couldn't stand the lines and I enjoyed what I was doing. So I just decided to do what I do so well, my teacher will let me do it. I guess it kind of worked out. <laughs> um, this was, I, I love this place in art. Um, this is when I was with you a lot, Josh. These are the days. And um didn't know anything about painting. Marcia on the right. Um, she really grew me into like just just doing whatever I want to do with paint, just experimenting. I love thin washes and stuff. So so. Let's let's introduce Mar Marcia. Oh. People don't know her. So she is a, a painting professor at the University of West Florida that me and Kenny both studied under. Marzi is Italian and introduced us to traditional oil painting methods. Yes. And so this is her painting on the right, and this is your painting of your brother on the left. I painted both of these. Oh, you painted both of these? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is an homage to her. Like, she okay. painted in a similar style, not like this. I wanted to make it my own, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm that's that's a compliment to me. You kind of thought it was hers. <laughs> Clearly not, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love this painting of your brother. And uh, yeah, like, yeah. you did this without you hadn't learned about anatomy, no. or like the flow of light or shadow lines or edges, or you just came in and did that, which is what blew everyone's mind. Um. I don't know, man. I just tried to um I just tried to make sure the imagery matched the feeling. So something if the knee was dark and heavy, um I just wanted to make it dark and heavy. If it was round, I wanted you to be able to reach out and grab it. 
Um, I, I see a lot of stuff now that I can't improve. I'm always looking in the improving space, but I, I was satisfied with it then, and I didn't know any different. So, yeah, well, I, I watch you every day, man. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I can pick up on something, like shit. <laughs> Well, I had the same training you had. I was just trying to figure stuff out. Yeah, but I felt like you knew what you were doing. And it was like... Maybe I pretended better. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just knew that. It was like, hey, th that guy's doing it. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it too. We're, we're going to do this. And like, I saw you do something. I was like, I'm going to do it. Um, you was that, that drive, man. Like, I mean, I was going to do it regardless, but seeing someone, really, you had a lot of passion. You have a lot of passion in what you do. And I really connected with that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, should I move on? Or? Yeah. Um, so just jumping into crayons. And so this is crayon on Yupo, right? Yeah, it's a very slick paper. Yeah. Um, get a lot of cramps just getting that build up and then things start to kind of like take away this because it's, it's wax you know and those little spots right there <laughs> it melted off so. <laughs> <laughs> um but um this was fun i just always wanted to push the boundary of what it, whatever i was working with so crayons was something that i had early on so it was just, it's me, to me, it was just me taking my roots with me and then taking the only thing I understood, which is colors and paint. I, I love paintings uh, and, and I, I can just get lost in them. So I just wanted to see if I can combine the two and this is where I ended up. Oh, this is the start. Nice. And Kenny got really insane with crayons, as we'll see. Um, this is this still like one of my like favorite drawings, man. Like, it's really hard to Billy Rembrandt. Yeah, it's one of my favorite drawings, like ever. Uh, it, every time I look at it, it teaches me like how how I got here and uh, how like a long way to go because it was so free here. I didn't know what I was doing. There's a lot of stuff I know what I'm doing now, and it's not as interesting as some of these marks, you know. I guess, yeah, you, you've created a method now. Yeah. And then you were just figuring it out. You had no plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Josh, this, this is us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg gave us three colors, told us to, to do something with that, said we don't know shit about color. And we said, all right. And we, <laughs> we took that challenge, so... <laughs> Um, this is, um, this was like sports to me, man. Um, I love to like compete. Yeah, we were always competing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love to compete with you, but also be like be on your team. It was, it was like the best. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't trade that for anything. <laughs> so for people watching, my drawing is on the left and Kenny's is on the right. Yeah. And, and we we just dominate the drawing class. It was pretty <laughs> much like no one else was there. And you, you, me, and Greg were just like hanging out doing crayon competitions. <laughs> it was so cool, man, because it was like, oh, our last drawing sucked. Let's do it again. And then we, it, we really got into it. And I don't know, man. They, they did a world. I, I'll look at your work like all day. <laughs> Like, look what he did there. It's like, I, I got to learn this. And look what he did here. And it's like, oh, Josh. Is <laughs> yeah, I'd get upset because he'd always do that, that red square. Oh, that's my thing. You put that red square in there. And I was like, yep, Kitty won. Kitty won. He's got the red square. And I'm like, this is, what is this? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I, honestly, I, I, again, Start from your own little thing and see if you can stand on it. 
and go from there. <laughs> Just go for what you know, right? Yeah. Um, this was again, this was 2015. Um, I want to show that I was working. I need to show myself that I was working. Um, I'll click into it so you can see like the processes or the process. Um, I started painting on acetate and I used cooking oil because I didn't have any oil. What? <laughs> so that painting took about two years to dry. What, what cooking oil? Uh, I don't know, but it was, it was canola oil. Canola uh, oil. Canola vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. It's a little thinner. Oh my God. I had both in there. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Some vegetable oil. But I, I just needed something to paint, man. And um, I had one foot. Um, I was home by myself. Um, my brother would come in every now and then. Uh, so I just had to get something out. I had to move. Uh, it's hell sitting there like that. So being able to kind of like leave here was perfect and plus I was scared um I always had a model to look at um I've done self-portraits you know uh I kind of like measured myself learning what I was doing through self-portraits but um really y'all told me to like just put paint on a canvas and this was my approach to it <clears throat> So, um, just just laying these colors how I just normally would. I'm figuring out as I go. I'm not caring about any bit of like just being tight or whatever like that. Um, Pain was done in like a, I think it was a day or two. And it was probably like a day. So just let it sit. Um, as you can see, this looks like a hard time in life. It was. So, and then there's the red square. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. Hey. Nice. Um, again, Greg, he like mentored us and he really like he just, he just made sure we pushed everything we done. Like he, he was like always like the devil's advocate. Like he was like, Oh, you're doing this? Well, how about that? And it's like you you couldn't win, but that's what that's that's what got us this far. We we never settled on just like one thing that we liked, you know. So and this was I, I wanted to learn what he did. Um, his great, I mean, his drawings was just like amazing. And this is my back ladder. Just to introduce his work, Greg does um, layers of powder graphite sealed with acrylic. And they build up into these incredibly deep, luminous drawings on paper. And Greg always cuts the edge, like like you see in this uh, yeah. drawing here. Um, and he does landscape and figurative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he did a lot of beach scenes. So Kenny learned the, his uh, technique and uh, did a Greg drawing. <laughs> a Greg drawing, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I just started applying everything I knew, um, or everything I could like, like grab hold of and just start putting it into like places that, that really hit home. Um, my cousin passed away, um, two years ago and I just wanted to do a piece of him, how I remembered him and just tried to just uh, apply as many things that felt right as I know. Um, and then the drawing on the right, um, this is my girlfriend, Susie. Um, I really wanted to push, like, just, just really work the medium, you know, and not just do, like, a just one figure taking up the page. So this was a real fun, like, project to do, like, especially in the process of it. I had so much fun. So, yeah, and this is Crayola. Yeah. It feels like oil painting. What? Oh. It's Crayola in the tradition of, of Western oil painting. Yeah, in, in a sense. Um, yeah, I'm painting with them. Yeah, that portrait's insane. 
it's completely insane. God, and the socks and the shoes. Oh, the shoes. This oh, my God. I was stuck on the part. socks. You need a detail of the socks. Uh, God, you can see the ridges in them. That was incredible. I know I have a, a, a detail. Um, They may be on my Instagram. I can pull that. Oh, I'm not logged in. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so th those shoes. Um, oh, uh, my favorite time about art. Yo, we we like go into like the portal zone at like like ten, eleven o'clock at night and don't know what's going on. <laughs> that that's what happened. <laughs> the hours went by and the shoes and the leg and stuff is done and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you gotta do. Yeah. Um, this is me just like really pushing uh the feel for like like skin and, and building it up uh, the way I first start approaching um painting. Um I see a whole bunch of colors. Um I, I guess I guess it's a gaze or a scry. It, is that what they call it? Like you're gazing or you're scrying at something and things get kind of blurry and you just see a whole bunch of colors rather than the color on top that's flesh tone or whatever. Yeah, that so arm is And it's in there for a long period of time and kind of like pushing these things with like crayon. Um, that's, yeah, that's the drawing on the right. Uh, I push it a little bit further. and But my favorite part is like the arm. Yeah, and you do many passes and you build up the wax surface. So it becomes almost glazing, you know? Yeah, it gets to a point where you're either barely touching it and then it doesn't look like it's doing anything. And then after your eyes adjust, like there is a glaze there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is some of my current work. Um, starting to push a little bit more. Um, this drawing on the left, it's a little tight, but I really enjoyed it. Um, my friend's right there in the middle, that green jersey. Um, his father passed away this, this year um, and that um, blue tank top. And those are his two brothers right there. <laughs> um, this drawing is insane. Yeah, just a southern home and just showing what it's like for everyone to kind of be there that really like hit home with me so i really enjoyed doing this piece um this this piece on the right is a commission from a good friend rob um, his dog passed away and this is the coolest dude ever and he just like hey man like uh, his girlfriend's carrying i think they both came up with the idea he was like i want my dog as a knight and I was like, I'm with it. <laughs> so, um, he said, do whatever I want to do, explore. I haven't done any, like, I, well, I never really done animals. Well, I did that one, I did my dog, Ella, in that past photo. But, I mean, it was pretty small. Uh, I don't really know how to do um, fur, hair, or, or whatnot. So, this was fun. It was fun to tackle that and, and learn some things with it. Um, and so mostly you're doing a commission work and did you put anything in here about EA Sports? I did not. Kenny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, with the EA Sports thing, you I mean, better than like a card game and I love basketball and so I do like these little, well, I mean, I do like drawings or whatnot on the iPad. I'm just now getting used to this. You yeah. Know? Like, hey. But uh, you took this illustrating style and EA Sports hired you to illustrate a board game. Yeah. Well, well a card game. A card game. Yeah. And you got this job from Pensacola, which is very impressive. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that just shows, like, how good you are, you know? Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be seeing that soon. Like, 
in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you probably can't show those drawings anyways. I, I can't. And no, you get to see. Some modifications of it, so I'm, I'm kind of like waiting on the next thing. Yeah. But uh, they're cool. <laughs> and they're like this type of style. So. Um, and from here, we just get into spirituality. This is this is the thing that pulled me through. Um, uh, I, I really got into this when I was younger. And I don't mean by learning other people's like spirituality. I ran into walls where I started conflating things and understanding that there's different mechanics of how everyone lives their life. But being young, uh, I started coming up with my own process in my mind. So to me, this is home. It, it pushes my art. Um, it's always in it. And yeah, so um, this is me. This is These are my notes. But I want to start turning my notes into pieces. I start looking at what where other people are kind of like eclectic or whatever like that, esoteric like type of drawings and whatnot. And I really just start writing down things that were coming to me. And it's easy for me to, to kind of express that in some like 2D art form with, with some design. So, so this is um, me working with colors, me working with um, principles, me working with um, um, vowels, me working with um, just the, the revolving of everything. So can you yeah. interpret one of these? Um, we can just do uh, the middle one. Um, so I, is, um, you'll see like this little symbol on the top left. Um, you see the red, so that's, that's kind of like um, imagination, fire. Um, you have a thought and then you have the blue, the feeling. Um, so, and these things come to you. Um, not every thought is your thought, not every feeling is your feeling. And sometimes you got to uphold that. And sometimes you're seen for that. So it's kind of like it, you, you put that in what you call I and you uphold that. A lot of times these things aren't you. <clears throat> and um, I always treat things like, like a seed. Um, you got to water the seed and depending on how you take care of it is how it's going to grow. So you plant good seeds in life. Um, um, you have a fruit for life. And you see like the, the spiral of those two. And and you see the yellow, the formations. Um, why? Um, it, I love why. I love that. Uh, I always ask myself why. And I, I just like the, the thoughts and the feelings revolving around these things. And you can kind of see that in all three pieces. And uh, yeah, and that's, that's the, the gist of it. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is um, a literal language to you. But to everyone yeah. else, it's, it's abstraction. But you can interpret these things. All the colors mean something. And then you have letters in there. Um, yeah, like, yeah. So, I mean, th and this is what I'll talk with. This is what um, I kind of teach and mentor with when it comes to art with kids. Um, kids kind of can pick up on it. You can't keep it. This is not really as complex, I don't think, at all not complex at all um i just add tell the kid to uh, hey wh what you thinking about what you feeling about um where you taught that is that yours um and let's roll with that and you go for what you know and then you stop at certain points write these things down and you get these little symbols um you gotta ask yourself why you gotta ask yourself where you at you gotta ask yourself um you gotta look in the mirror you know, and if you can art from the mirror, and you are in some real shit, in my opinion. So do you have any of those notes? Um, this is the notes at that time. Yeah. So like, <clears throat> wow, you, you, um, just, just really looking at the angles of each letter. Um, put, put these letters on like a, a circle. Um, on like the monad or whatever like that. And then you turn them different directions. You're gonna see they're gonna line up with certain points. Um, 
again, I'm also seeing the backdrop of seasons when, when I'm doing this. Um, red is, 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 is passion. Red is like um, the first way you see yourself. Um, the situation, that circle, this is what you're in is blue. Um, you got to communicate with those things. Um, <clears throat> the letter Y, I mean, the, the letters Y O U, I'm just looking at those things and how they fit into one another. Um, really, just really just breaking these simple words that we use every day that we don't act ourselves while we use these things and seeing if you can <clears throat> articulate it for yourself and make sense without anyone telling you see what you get and this is what I get you get one two three um the yellow why um, has three points so it, uh, it ultimately becomes um what you see and everyone else sees in your environment you know and your environment that that is you and that that deals with the one and the one which is you get to two um yourself um dealing with yourself and other aspects relating to yourself and you realize that you you're sitting in a circumstance your circumstance is this body and so and this is just adding everything up okay and so you started at uh, the university of west florida you moved into this this crayon figurative art and then you started getting into these kind of um automatic almost like early like psychoanalysis drawings as symbols and then all these ideas are coming together into a brand called of course yeah yeah and so this is this is now a packaged message that you want to bring to people. So can you tell us what of course is about? Um, of course, it's just a space where um, a self-realization and articulating that self-realization. Um, it's, a, it's a space where um, you deal with the contradictions and you see truth in them. And another person can kind of, uh, they're, they're in that space um, without talking and whatnot. So, to me, that's the only reason why you would say, of course, and then you can take it in many paths. So um, you're of, of course, the course that you're on, and then um, you're, you're taking different courses in life and stuff, and you're choosing these things. And I really wanted to put the star in there because the star has like five points. And I just want to show the, the star kind of transforming into some, to some things. And it gets moved by the wave, or sometimes it's kind of, it, it creates the, the wave. And um, I track these things with just, just the elements, everything on the periodic table, um, transits, um, uh, astrology and stuff like that, like real, real native spirituality. And then, and then drafting, really putting points and looking at these points in, in one space. And you just end up saying, of course, this is what I was doing. Or, you know, you just run into people you, who you're supposed to run into and you stop doubting that process that didn't make sense in the beginning. So your, your own way of really moving in life is, is to me, is key. It got me this far, I can only tell you that. So why use this um, kind of like capitalist language, this, uh, this common, advert you know language i mean this could be like a like a, a beer label or something is this are you taking that as like a common language are you trying to subvert um it are you trying to subvert capitalism or what what is this about i mean no nah, um really it's i feel like i'm always in a complex place in my mind and i gotta bring things to the surface yeah so, for me, it's what's brewing, uh, what's, what's brewing at the time. So beer companies, was, they made perfect sense. And, and that's, that's kind of what I took it. And whether it's a storm, whether it's kind of something you're making on your own. Um, I don't know. <laughs> spirits, <laughs> moonshine, spirits, it's all, it's all in that place. <laughs> you know? um, like, those stars really are like 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 water cycles so okay and so what is 
So what is of course going to look like? So you've made some shirts, but what is the big, um, the, the path for of course? How do you envision it in the future? Um, it's, it's a place of work, really just reminding you to, to go to work. And for me, it's like reminding you to go to work on your creativity. Um, I wanted to do shirts and stuff, just, just wear the principles and the virtues that I carry around with myself every day on my sleeves. So um, just, I had to go through a, a hard stretch of transforming my thoughts, realizing what were mine, what wasn't, you know, transforming my feelings, being able to get out of my feelings, um, getting out of heavy heart, uh, you know, like really caring for things I shouldn't care about and learn to care for things that, you know, I was neglecting. So transforming thoughts and feelings really kind of takes you out of those bodies and puts you like, um, not over it, but just like, like, and like um, as a parameter, you, you put yourself in a parameter place to deal with these things. And I feel of course like that's that. So this is, um, fire and water, the, um, the, the inner workings of, of thoughts and feelings, and you can practicalize them, like, just, you know, coming up with ideas, like, things for the fire and the water to move through, so things for your imaginations and the things that your imagination sit in over time to move through, and then you get something practical, so this is me just really putting in my work, trying to make things real, you know. So is this about, um, an idolatry that, that you're creating, a spirituality that you're creating, because by creating clothes, you're essentially making a uniform. Do you want people, do you want to give your unique way of thinking to the world? Do you want people to be? I mean, I don't really think it's my, I mean, I don't believe it's my unique way of thinking. I think a lot of people like, um, Kind of thinking and stuff on this space for me this is just a space and i'm i'm telling the possibilities of of me in it like i'm, I'm going through it so it's like hey I, of course i'm not alone here like teamwork makes the dream work there's a lot of people out here that feel a certain type of way but there's a lot of people out here like holding on to things that were taught and it's really scary to give up the things that you were taught to go find stuff out for yourself. And when you do that, you're gonna make it if you just put in the time. So of, of course is that place, it's not mine. It's, I just really wanna put my standpoint on it and say, hey, um, look, this is what I'm doing. This is how I learn life. This is how I wanna keep moving forward. Um, if this resonates with you, like here, but you know what I mean? Like do your own thing. So this is just, this is just the current medium you've chosen to work in. Yeah. Right? Correct. So it's no longer crayon. It's um, kind of like a consumer culture. The, the, the most common of the common, you know, it's like uh, advertisements and, and, and T-shirts and things like that. That's, that's your new medium now. Um, I guess, I mean... Uh... For me, I'm just putting myself out there, but I'm aware of this stuff like myself. I, I, don't, I can't say I don't care if it ever sells, but I'm not like in it for that. You know what I mean? It, it's just, it's, it is my canvas when I can't put all that in a, in a portrait or something, you know? Um, sometimes I need words to get it out. Um, um, this, this is my poetry in a sense and I get to wear it. So uh, I feel like when I'm wearing that, that day, that's, that's the space I'm, I'm in, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a reminder, man, for me, wear lighter thoughts and feelings. Like it, I don't feel like anyone ever has the answers to life. And so if you can remind yourself that you don't have all the answers, but to keep working, um, I'm gonna wear that shirt every day. That's what's on my back. Nice.
And so, yeah, now it's it's coming back to the <laughs> beginning where the art is becoming a part of your daily life. So now you actually wear the artwork. You wear the shirt. It has the message on it. It's a reminder to keep you in a certain mindset and everything like that. So it's becoming more and more a part of your actual lived life instead of a separate studio practice. Yeah, it, exactly. This is, I, I got to create, I got to make my life. You know what I mean? And I can't always be looking for an example. So fuck, <laughs> if, if I want to see it, <laughs> I guess I got to put it on, you know? Yeah. And I never know what's going to be next, but it's um, uh, it, it excites me when I see people have like certain clothes and stuff and the vibes that make you feel. And uh, you know, I hey, what's my vibe? I don't really know. Um, let's let's go through that journey. <laughs> so uh, you know, this this is where I'm at right now. Uh, yeah. Nice. So you're on you're on your own path. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool though. Man, I mean, I don't know. It's it's cool. Like I'm definitely learning how to like shake hands. But um uh, I'm I'm definitely learning like, you know, like to not give up what I'm doing. And to me that's been like the, the scariest part. Yeah. And, and art, like really, really art and some shit. Um, I mean, I'm not just out here trying to like develop my skill or whatever like that. I'm really trying to get something out that can be a little difficult at times. So when you imagine the future, yeah. you know, where do you want to be? What do, you, what do you want the end to be? Or does that matter? I want the end to be something that I can change and I, I just don't want it to stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, whether that's here or elsewhere, it's just and the world, life doesn't look like it stopped. I don't want to stop neither. And so I, I just want to be something that can change and, and inspire. And So your art practice is a space of spiritual growth. Number one, you want to keep changing, you want to keep exploring. Yeah. yeah. And so for you, success is that as long as you keep growing and changing, then, yeah. then you're doing I'm, it right. Yeah, I'm gonna wake up every day for that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I mean, I'm I'm a little bit I'm the I'm the same way. I wanna I wanna go new places and art when you're stuck in a small town and you can't and you can't travel. Art, art can take you everywhere. Culture, culture is deep, you know, and you don't have to leave your home. You can just dive in. I guess that's what you're doing, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Art's awesome, man. It's <laughs> endless, yo. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Do you want to talk about some political stuff now? I, I don't. I don't care, man. Do you not care? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Well, you talked about how art got you through some some hard times, but um, being being black in the South <laughs> is is a hard time. Um, and you paint, you draw black figures, and. What's it like to be in that community? What's it like to make art in that community? Do you feel responsible to support any message? Or how are you choosing to handle it? Um, no, I don't res feel responsible for any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, so, I mean, I, I can jump into that space because I can't deny that I wasn't operating from just looking at it from that standpoint. Hey, I'm a black guy in the South. This is, you know, I'm doing art here. Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? How people are viewing it? Um, I really, you know, want to stand up for this justice, for this injustice, whatever like that. And 
I had to always open the book. I had to always turn on the television. I had to always look around my shoulder. I had to always see how someone else was feeling. And it, I feel like I was putting more weight on myself. So, so for me, it was, <clears throat> I'm not going to claim to be anything that was named um, before me. If I got to read about it and that name was given, um, if anything, I'm, I'm working to kind of like, like detach from that and just be something totally different that's not in those constraints and we all are capable of doing that so I know that the, the, it seems like a lot more positive things in that space so that's that's what I'm going for yeah yeah and I think that's a normal I think that's a common reaction in the south is is um the way people think is so strict and the, the boxes are so small and yeah. that, it and is. it's you, yeah i think the creative people just do whatever they can to get out of that box yeah like people they'll come up to you like you art i got an idea you should art <laughs> Uh, like, 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 the the passion stops when their conversation stops. Like, I, like, I, I can't go. Like, you're telling me something that's already done. It's like we're updating history. We're not creating anything new. Like, I don't want to update history. I, I want to create something new. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you, you can't help but do something, change, and it may look rebellious, but it's just, it's just different. And it may hurt others, it may not. But again, I'm not going to stand up for something that's not in my benefit. And I've stood up for a lot of things in the South that didn't do anything but put me in another box. Yeah. Looks like the box keeps having like a different label or color on it, but I still keep putting myself in a box, standing up for another person's thoughts and feelings so <laughs> the pattern was me not to do that anymore <laughs> yeah yeah and I think when you do when you do not accept the box you grow up in you're immediately alienated from that community internally you grow up alone yeah 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 that's it yeah yeah, because yeah. I grew up a redneck. I didn't want to be a redneck. <laughs> I didn't want that. But, yeah. Yeah, but like, um, but you gotta, you, you can't dodge it. You, you gotta, you gotta learn it. And if you can learn it, you can get through it. You just don't want to get lost in becoming it. Yeah. You know? it's, it's a, look at the world and say, hey, these are all the things I'm not. Instead of looking for, oh, I'm that. I see myself in that. Like I used to, I used to do that. I used to, hey, well, that's like me. Hey, that's like me. And then you start standing up for all these things. But at some place, you just, like you get by yourself, and those things that you thought you were can help you. And I think I think that's one of the hardest things about being an artist. You know, being a, a creative is you are choosing a life of rugged individuality. You are alone. You're not thinking like other people. You're not putting yourself in the box. You're trying to do new things and you're very alone. And people, the people you're around don't understand you or what you're trying to say or what, why are you doing all this stuff? Why are you just working and making money? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know? Like, like, you got a talent, you got a gift, use it, son. Like, oh, <laughs> I thought I was. Son. <laughs> yeah. So, what do, you, what do you think about art in the South? I mean, New Orleans was pretty much our little world down there. Yeah. That's, that's what we had. Yeah. But in Pensacola, everyone is trying 
to make an art scene constantly. They are, yeah. Against great resistance. Yeah. It, yeah. And it is, it's like people, it's like people that are like trying to make an art space down here for art's sake. They're, they're not. They're not trying to do it with a narrative. And I think the South, there's a heavy narrative here. And you're supposed to tell this side or you're supposed to tell that side, but you're not really supposed to talk about anything other than the narrative. Yeah. And they don't mind what side you're on because you, you know, we can always combat that. We can always support that. But the minute you just start doing stuff that has nothing to do with these things, it gets alienated quick. Yeah. And so we've tried to start several art groups there. And the problem always went into funding. Funding yeah. and um, the people who did have the money, which weren't a lot of people. <laughs> um, they had their own agendas. They had their own plans. Yeah. And it was... Yeah, there's no way for anyone to get their message out, anyone to make the group. It was all these kind of um, on the street in people's garages, the pop-up shows. Yeah. Like, that's the kind of beautiful thing about, I think, the art in the South, and especially in New Orleans, is people do things themselves. They don't wait for a place. You go to New Orleans, they got kitchens on the sidewalk. They got they got a whole full bar and a club just out of the back of a van, yeah. you know. And um, it's not like that other places in America. But that's that's the cool thing is like they people do it themselves, you know. That, that's for very little. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna do it regardless, man. Uh, they're doing it for something like greater than like, things that we deem accessible or successful. Like, yeah, because having that, it's not about the money there. Just having that moment of the show, that's something that's been done. And now it's safely stored in the past. It'll never go away. We had that moment, we had that, that show. People came, you know, we created that. Yeah. And that was it. No money. <laughs> you didn't get any opportunities after that. No one, no one cared. But you just did it for that one yeah. moment. Like we made yeah. something happen. <laughs> it's yeah. Really, it seems like everyone worked their magic, man. It's, 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 it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, the hard thing, though, was um, because there is so much resistance, people burned out, people gave up. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's like, it's, it's really hard to keep going. If, if you, mm, it's, it's life, you got, you got to go through, everyone has to go through life. And you yeah. don't know life's twists and turns, and it's like, some things like really blindside you. Yeah. I had a lot of friends who were doing music and poetry and art, and they were homeless. They lived in a van, you know, they charged their phone at the library, or they're living in like whatever space someone allowed them to stay in for a moment and um, doing crazy things for money, as you know. Yeah. I never yeah. did anything. <laughs> <laughs> really don't give it up like for me it was for me I had to learn how to always be able to do art just in different mediums like I had to yeah if you're not doing this stuff when, when you know when it's real like that you're gonna go crazy inside if it's not getting out or you don't know how to manipulate some shit and then it's like at the same time I got things I gotta uphold I'm, it's not just me by myself you know I'm not like I, I jumped in certain like circumstances or whatever in life and I got to see those things through too. So, you know, taking those part-time jobs, you, you know, like that, that shit gets tough. You, you're starting a job. You know, you're not going to get nothing after it. Cause it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm working 
just to go home and do art. Or I'm working just to go like get this and it's like I gotta do all this shit in between. I, I gotta pay pills in between. I, I gotta do all these things in between. And it 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 really it really fucks with you. Yeah, it's hard to um to be skilled at something, to be really good at something, but no one no one's aware of it. And you go do jobs that are demeaning for no money, jobs that you're not safe at, that <laughs> probably aren't legal. You're doing it just to go back and continue doing that thing that you know is just for you because there's no <laughs> stuff in nowhere to show there's no one to buy there's no one cares yeah and it's yeah like damn it's like like you're really using art to like figure out your life so it's like damn like i'm really using this to to, to get my footing while trying to to develop in the same space everyone else agrees upon certain things to you know what I mean? And that's that's difficult. So I'm like, well, why don't you just take this system? <laughs> and it's like, I get nothing out of taking that system. I got just just in my life now. <laughs> 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 what am I here for? Yeah, yeah, but... yeah, I mean art 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 becomes a reason to live. Um, finishing that painting, you know is meaning, um, learning that next thing, getting that next level, and and the culture, the culture makes you bigger than you. You know, you're a part of these thousands of years of conversation. You know, you're a part of something big instead of being this small person. I think being in the South, you know, you're kind of taught that you're not important. You're kind of taught that you're not educated, that you probably <laughs> won't do much. You know, there's a feeling, that feeling, everybody feels it. I don't think a lot of people talk about it, but like American culture tells you you're from the South, you're kind of. Oh, well, you can just say it, you know, we. we... <laughs> you're, you're a dumb piece of shit. You're from the South, you're a dumb piece of shit. Um, no one cares what you have to say, yeah. But I, I feel like this is why we, that's that's why the, we don't give a damn anymore. Because it's like, well, I'm still going to do this, even if I'm a piece of shit. Like, it's like, <laughs> I guess that's just not changing. So when you accept it and just keep going, you start finding out that you, yeah, everyone can be a piece of shit, but you don't always have to uphold that. You can, you can be something else. Yeah, but the saddest thing is like, now I did I did leave and I went all over and I met all kinds of fucking people and the people in Pensacola are real and they're doing real stuff and there's really great artists there who, who will never show, who will never be known. And some of the smartest people I've ever met in all the big schools and whatever I did were in Pensacola. And that's the thing I think that's hard with small towns is you think you think you're less all the time, but really, if you took all that hard work, that striving, that independence, and you got dropped off somewhere with opportunities, boom. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny like you say that, man. Like I just got a new job and it's like I walked into this job with the mindset of, I, I got to make sure I hold my own. And I'm doing all these things that I just thought, that, you know, just requested for me of the job. I'm just, I'm just doing what the job asked me to do. And you just have other people that's like, what are you doing? You're like, just doing what the job told me to do. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm putting my best foot forward. And it's like, no, you're doing way too much. And you're just like, Huh? Like, where am I at? Like, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? So I'm not supposed to do this? Like, like you know, you, you're brought up with having to work that hard, having to do things. So it's like, I, I believe it. Yeah. Tell you the 
the right opportunities, you'll just run with it. Yeah, I remember like some of the jobs I do, some of the jobs I probably get to do with me, <laughs> they were so absurd that it was like, it was surreal almost. Like the things we'd have to do um, and the situations we find ourselves in, it was crazier than anything on TV. It was like just surreal stuff. I and believe- you're like, what am I doing this stuff for? What am I? <laughs> what they did to make it, like, I, I just, you just feel like you're doing something wrong because it's like these people made it and look what we're doing. <laughs> we're doing for them. <laughs> You know, it's funny, like, so this made me feel better, is, like, all these big New York artists up here, um, like, one of them was showing in the, I don't want to control, was showing in the whole gallery, which is, like, a big hip gallery here, but I found out that he does um, paint and sip on the weekends, you know, like, one of the, one of the, like, little acrylic painting Mm -hmm. classes where people get drunk yeah yeah and like there was a lot of like really impressive art people working at this paint and sip and that's new york city so like stop it's all just a facade it never ends (laughs) (laughs) yeah and I work. I was working for a really big artist here as a studio assistant, and she's big. She's making it international shows and stuff. She's got money. Mm-hmm. She's influential. People are copying her style. Mm-hmm. But watching her is like she was trapped, like extreme social pressure, um, navigating all these situations. It wasn't time for her to sit and enjoy what she had done because it's deadline, 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 deadline. There's big money on the line. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So I don't know. Well, you gotta uh, do it for yourself, period. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> well, you gotta do it for other people. It's gotta be, it, oh, just, yeah. it has to be, it has to be, spiritual or it doesn't matter at any level you're at unless you're Gerhard Richter and you're making a hundred million a year then you can be like yeah whatever but yeah it doesn't matter you got to be doing it for yourself to grow and for other people to grow if you, if you can make a living off your work I feel like like you you're in there you're, you're doing <laughs> and to, to make any more than that it's like you know but even that that's like that's like really hard like that's a real goal you know what I mean and I don't know man it's it's tough just to to do it for those those true genuine reasons yeah balance and balance your livelihood <laughs> yeah but yeah, one thing I like is I, I choose the way I'm going to suffer. And yeah. I think my suffering is like beautiful. Most people do stupid jobs that they took because they were scared to make money. And then 10 years have gone by and they're like, what have I done? Yeah. What, did, what did any of this mean? Yeah. Eight hours a day for 10 years. What did I do? Did I grow? Did I learn anything? I'm not going to have to worry about that. It's hard, but yeah, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, you're doing that too. Yeah, but you you got to respect and you got to love when, like, someone's, like, really doing that, you know? And I commend you. Like, you just, you go for it. (laughs) Josh is like, well, I don't know. I'm doing this. And I'm just like, that's Josh. Please don't ever change. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, it's it's real cool though. Like you can you can see that in, like people work. Yeah, I, I don't know. That that's that's what I love to see. It's just like it, their work doesn't look like their last work, or if it does, 
is changed in some degree, which means their mind is changing with their, their circumstance and situation is changing. And that person doesn't have to, again, go a mile down the road or they can go across the country. It's just it's a person being able to really get that out and show you that in the work, to me, like the art and the articulate and they're, and they're doing it from multiple spaces and through whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's gotta have that, that soul. Yeah. If people, if they just had it like, if it's too easy, you can tell it's like decorative. It's like, it's yeah. hip. You can tell it's hip. They're just following a trend or something. It's a wave. It's, it's a wave. Yeah, it's a wave, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, anything, I feel like anything you do, like, like that you really like have to go through some shit and really get out um it's it won't be a wave in the beginning it would be a it would be an after fact you know what i mean like you, yeah. you really work at it so like i i commend anyone that's is breaking their goddamn neck and have any of like amount of influence or whatever like that cuz you know i don't care if they were put in that position or not they have to do some work yeah. Oh, man. This was fun, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We did it. We well, did thank it. you, Kenny. Um, thank you. Yeah. We covered a lot. It was a little discursive, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Good luck with everything. I'll be in touch. Hey, you too, man. Take care.